In this video, I'm going to show you a tool to help you play your saxophone quietly at any time of the day or night so you don't disturb your neighbors nor your young children. All right, let's say you live in an apartment or you're traveling and staying in a hotel for a few days. Or even if you have young kids who go to bed early and the only time you can practice is late at night, what do you do? Well, in a previous video, which I'll link in the description, I gave a few suggestions. But in this video, I want to show you a tool that I think is one of the better solutions. So in this video, I'm reviewing the Travel Sax 2 by Odyssey Music's Ramon Manas. Now, there will be links in the description to the two interviews with Ramon that I did for my Everything Saxophone podcast. And one was at the NAMM show in 2022 when I met Ramon for the first time face to face and got to see the Travel Sax and play it for the first time. Now, first point, really super duper important. This is a tool it's not a replacement for the saxophone okay what ramon has said to me the reason why he created this was because he he was living with roommates and he you know didn't want to disturb them so he needed something to practice so he, over years and years and many iterations he created the travel sax too and this device has helped him practice super quiet without disturbing anybody but as he says it's a tool all right so let's look at Let's look at this more closely and then I'm going to show you some of the other things that you get. So the Travel Sax 2 comes just like this. Here's the Travel Sax right here. What's awesome about this that sets this apart from, I think, any other tool, practicing tool for saxophone is the keys, the replication of the keys. Everything's in the right spot. Okay, you've got all the keys, you've got your left pinky keys, you've got your right hand side keys, you even have the F sharp trill and the F sharp altissimo keys, you got your lower right hand pinky keys, you have the octave key in the back. If you want to use the thumb hook, you can, you could also move it up and down, which is great. Now there is a speaker, there is a speaker on the travel sax too. It is not the best quality, and when I spoke to Ramon about this, he admitted it. He said, "Yep, yeah, that was that was not you know the, that was not the main concern. The main concern for creating the travel sax was to make it a practicing tool, and in particularly to help you work on your fingerings for sure. Um, the speaker, though, can be bypassed with uh, a couple of apps. I'll talk more about that later. Check out this case. Look how small." This is, this is so light, it's ridiculous. So no problem getting that on an airplane, I gotta tell you, all right? You open it up, you have a place to put your cables, and then the travel sacks with all the accessories is in there. Okay, so now let me take this out again, and let me show you some of the accessories in here. It comes with its own mouthpiece. This is not a saxophone mouthpiece, it's its, its own mouthpiece over here. Um, if you want the best response for articulation, yeah, I'm going to say for articulation, this may be the way to go, okay? Um, but you can use your own mouthpieces if you so desire. And in fact, what's really cool that Ramon did, he included an alto sax mouthpiece. Uh, there was even a reed and, and a ligature in there along with some mouthpiece patches that was that was actually very considerate of him this is a stock alto sax mouthpiece it is not a professional one so if you play on something other than a stock mouthpiece understand that if you want to use this it's gonna you know it's gonna be different a uh, different feel now what's really really important while you can absolutely use your own mouthpiece with this whether it's soprano alto tenor or barry and I'll show you the, the accessories that you, you can use to use that. This is based on sensors, okay? So whether you use theirs or your own, there's a sensor, oops, sensor on the inside and other sensors on the inside that go by, you know, the breath speed, um, whether an attack t -t has happened, it's by sensor. It is not triggered by pressure onto the reed. Okay, really super important. So when you're playing into this, it's you could just blow. You could put your mouthpiece on, but you don't need to use the jaw pressure up into the reed to get the sound. It's just going to go off of the blow. So you may be saying, well, I want to work on my embouchure. So I don't know if I want to get this. I'm going to say to you, actually, I think it would be a really good idea to get this too, because even though you're not using the jaw pressure against the reed, you're still in the formation of your embouchure and you could still um, work on that. So 
instead of, let's say, putting this on and blowing like that and not keeping, maintaining the embouchure muscles. So I would say that um, if your mouthpiece does fit into the extensions, into the accessories, I think it would be a great idea. Now, let me talk about those accessories. So like I said, it comes with the Travel Sax mouthpiece. Um, it also, you can purchase the bundle of the uh, mouthpiece extenders over here so that you can fit your soprano mouthpiece. You can fit your tenor mouthpiece, your baritone mouthpiece. Let's get that in there. Also, the Alto has two uh, extensions over here. You've got this curved one. Okay, to match uh, the angle, you also have this. You also have this extender. All right, now where do these go? All right, really easy. Let me use the extender first. You just put it in here, and then I could put an alto mouthpiece. Let's use that stock mouthpiece that is provided, and I could just push that on. Now let me make a suggestion. Okay, and, and actually I showed what I what you shouldn't do. If you're going to use the extension, I would say put the mouthpiece on the extension first, then put it into the travel sacks. Okay, just like, you know, you put your mouthpiece onto the neck, then you put the neck onto the instrument. That's what I would absolutely recommend. So I apologize for showing it the wrong way first. Um, the cool thing with this extension, it's not just for alto, because what you can do is you can take any one of the other mouthpiece extensions and just put it on. And then put your, uh, you know, your mouthpiece on that as well. Okay. Now, really important point that I have to make. So I'm going to use the tenor one as an example. So I use the, um, I use the chameleon, the 10 amp fan seven uh, chameleon seven star tenor mouthpiece. It does not fit easily into the tenor extender over here. It just doesn't. Um, I was able to make it fit. But one time when I pushed it in all the way, I almost couldn't get it out. So you don't want that happening to you. And Ramon talks about, you know, you've got to make sure that your mouthpiece fits, you know, it fits easily. Some of the things that you could do, um, I put a lot of cork grease on and it did go on easier. Another thing you could do is a little bit of like uh, oil, vegetable oil or whatever around this, and then it should go on easier. If it doesn't, don't force it because your mouthpiece will get stuck. And then it's going to be hard to get this thing out of the mouthpiece. Okay. And you don't want to wreck your mouthpiece. You don't want to break this thing either. Okay. So what I would recommend, this is just going to be me actually, and it's not going to be something that I would recommend for everybody. Um, I could actually put my mouthpiece on the alto, on the alto extension here. Problem is, is that it's going to move. That's not the best situation. Okay. But um, if I want to use my mouthpiece with the travel sacks, that's what I would do. But for the purposes of today, I'm going to use the travel sax mouthpiece. I'm just going to put that in there. Could I attach this to the extender? Absolutely. Okay. And attach it here, attach it here, and we're good to go. And the cool thing about the extender, it's more, it's more accurate to your distance when you play. Okay. It's, it's, pretty close to like a soprano and stuff like that. I'm going to take the extender off for right now though, and I'm just going to use the travel sax mouthpiece. Now to turn it on and to turn it off, there's a button in the back. I press that in and it lights up. You charge it with the included USB-C to USB cable. Okay. Um, this cable is going to be important also if you want to hook this up to your desktop or laptop and use a digital audio workstation, a DAW, um, or to use the SWAM app. Okay, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. All right, but for now, I'm not using anything. Now, let me show you what else is on here too. If you wanna use headphones, that would be this outer jack over here. This outer jack is for headphones. It's also for using a mini jack um, connector between uh, over here, the headphones to a uh, something like a Scarlett 2i2 USB um, audio interface. Okay, not a USB audio interface, an audio interface. So you would use that mini jack um, into the headphone over here, 
into your audio interface. That's what you would use that for. And you could also, there's an aux in for other uses as well. Okay, but I'm not gonna use that. Over here, this is where some spit is gonna come out. Okay, don't be alarmed. And you could just shake it out at the end when you're done. You can, you could actually just blow and let the spit come out. Okay, it will come out. I'm gonna say that for right now. All right, now this will not work unless you download the Travel Sax 2 app available on iOS and Android right now. It's free, okay, once you purchase this, of course. So let me give you a look into that app. Let's open up the Travel Sax 2 app. Okay, the first screen that you would normally see would be a listing of some quick tips. And the quick tips, the most important one is this. You have to pair your Travel Sax uh, your travel sacks via Bluetooth to the app. So the best way to do that would be to use the high right hand side keys, the top one, the curved one, you're going to press down the curved one and the side B flat key at the same time until you see on the bottom of your app that green bar that says now playing. Now I chose tenor. I'm going to show you how to, to choose that in a minute. The next thing that you would want to do if you want to use this app only to, you know, to play your travel sax and you could plug in, um, you know, via the headphone jack, you could listen via headphones, you would want to make sure that the speaker is on and I'm just tapping that right now so it's green it's on. And now it works. But that's not the sound I want. So here's what I want to do next. I'm going to go under sounds over here. I want a saxophone sound. I have a choice. I could I could do um, I could do French horn. I don't want French horn though. I could do trumpet. That's cool. I don't want it though. Um, I could do sound effects. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> I could do a helicopter. Got to blow kind of hard for that, though. <laughs> All right, let me get out of that. I don't really want those. I'm going to go up to the Odyssey Music Sax. That's what I want. And I'm going to click or tap tenor. When it's highlighted in green, that's the sound I should get. Okay, not a bad sound. Okay, but that's how I would get the tenor sound. I can choose any of the other saxophone sounds. Now let's go through some of the things that are in here. If you need to have any kind of tutorials, you'd click on the learn button and you can go through any one of these tutorials. Many of these will show you, will point to a YouTube video that you could watch, um, some quick tricks for one of the ones that I just showed you, which was the Bluetooth connection. There are others as well. Um, there's tutorials for editing fingerings. So let me talk about editing fingerings. I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually go in order for me to edit the fingerings. Um, actually, first, let me do this. I'm under learn. I'm going to go under fingerings. And if you don't know your fingerings, here's a really simple enough to use fingering chart. Okay. And it covers many of the notes here. All right. Not all of them, but it covers many of them. I'm going to go under configure and I've got a whole bunch of um, things going on here. I'm going to go to edit fingerings. Now you use this when you want to, for example, add altissimo fingerings. Okay. So for me, I was noticing when I was first playing this, I could not play altissimo. And in order to enable that, actually what I do need to do is under configure, go to settings. I needed to take off. I needed to, to, it says disable altissimo. I need to put that on off because I do use the altissimo. Okay. Um, there's other settings here as well. Transposing this, um, the breath channel, this stuff I don't deal with at all. I just let that go. All right. Now that I enabled altissimo fingerings, I want to show you by staying in the configuration panel, edit fingerings. And what I did. Um, I noticed that I couldn't play higher than um, than the F sharp. And in fact, I use a different altissimo F sharp fingering. So let, let me show you that. This, this is very common, especially if you were brought up playing a saxophone that did not have the F sharp altissimo key. 
So what I did, I just clicked add a fingering and uh, it allowed me, I just played a note. I played the fingering that I wanted and it allowed me to add that. Okay, so for example, here's the F sharp. And that's the one that I input into there. Um, if I want to add, I know, let me show you. I select the note, so I'm going to go with G sharp A flat. And I think that's in the fifth octave. Okay, and then I need to just hold it down. I don't even need to blow it. I can just hold it down. Yes, that's what I want, right? I'm going to con confirm that. And now that fingering is added there. Okay, so for those of you that play altissimo, you're going to want to add those notes in there. Now, if you want better sounds, I'm going to strongly urge you to download the SWAM app. You get a free trial. You get a free 45-day trial um, to do this. You can download it into your phone. Uh, I'm going to show you the desktop version. Before I do that, though, I have to show you one more thing that's crucial in order for that app to work on your desktop, and it's this. You see the speaker um, icon all the way in the upper right over here. I need to disable this so it shows red so that the app will work when I connect my travel sacks via the USB-C cable to my computer. Okay, so the first thing that you would need to do is you would need to download the SWAM app, which I've done already, and you would also need to create an account um, as well. Now, the first thing that we need to do after that is we want to make sure that, that it recognizes the travel sack. So I'm going to click over here on MIDI. I'm going to go to Inputs, and right now I had it enabled. You would see it like this. Click on that so that it recognizes the travel sacks. Now the next part is really important, okay? What you would need to do, it may not work. Mm. Mine does only because I've had this set up before, but I wanna show you what happened with me. So I'd like to click on the three dots over here. I want to go to controller mapping, MIDI mapping, and the expression over here, super important. It's gonna show up with a value of 11 or 14 all you need to do is click in this box and make it seven we found that that seems to work mm. and what you want to see is that expression um, meter moving up and down now the other thing that's going to be super important let me just get this out of the way over here go to the let me get out of here click midi presets go down until you see travel sacks to default okay so that would be the first thing i would do i just make sure that that's that's set for there okay and then what i would do next i want to definitely check the mapping table see what see what's going on here now channel 7 for expression seems to work for vibrato I, you can put this on seven also. I just found for me that um, it, it made it a little bit too much vibrato. So I'm going to leave this alone for right now. And let me explain some of the other features over here. Transposition. You could change the transposition by half step. Half step. I'm going to leave it for a B flat instrument minus two. The instrument. Um, the reason why mine says tenor sax is because I, I, when you download the SWAM app, you download all the saxophone sounds, and I just happen to choose the tenor sax one. Now, the cool thing, I've got lots of choices here, lots of different sounds. So let me go to here. This is the first sound. All right. Um, so that sounds okay. Not bad. Let me go to the next one, bright. I'll do this one. All right. Okay, not bad. Dry. Not 
not bad warm that's pretty good that one's pretty good and then we have the second level of of bright and warm and that kind of thing okay so you've got a bunch of choices over there i could add a little bit of vibrato not bad i can lessen the amount of key noise if i want i can lessen the breath noise i tend to want a, a bit less okay i could add a flutter tongue a growl i could bend the pitch <laughs> you want to have fun with that that's too much fun okay there's a lot of things that you can do in here um there's so many settings and to keep this video really concise um i'm just going to say one more thing but you can experiment with anything that you need expressivity you could set the levels over here the play modes okay um when you want the attack to start okay i'm going to put mine actually um around here i want it pretty immediate the key noise um the overblow threshold i like to keep this a little bit at the max actually this way i can add some dynamics to that overblow means that you would play if i overblew it i'd blow it up by an octave i don't want to do that um it this this is not overtone practice this will not help you with that okay so please keep that in mind for timbre this is where you could choose all the different sounds that you want pretty cool and you've got some other things going on here as well for the pitch you've got bending transposition all this stuff uh, except for the master tune if you're in europe you may be tuning to 442 you can change that and under advanced there's some more things here as well Okay, but I'm going to get out of that window. And this is just a basic overview. Now, I want to bring up a couple of points. I think this is a great solution. If you have young kids, if you are traveling a lot, you don't want to bring your saxophone on the plane if you're not performing. I think this is awesome. And putting in, you know, headphones, you can certainly put headphones in while you're connected via MIDI. You're, you're good to go. Okay, it's, it's quiet. It's super quiet. And you could practice all of your fingerings. Um, I would absolutely positively recommend this. Now, I'm going to say this here. I did not get this for free. I paid the full price. So this is not a paid advertisement. This is my own view. There are a couple things to consider. The fingerings feel different. These are based on sensors. Blowing in is based on a sensor, not pushing up against a reed. Okay, so you could just blow into your mouthpiece if you want to attach it. Still work on that embouchure a little bit, um, except for the reed pressure. Now, you may have a couple of questions with regard to how easy it is to blow through the travel sax compared to your saxophone or even compared to your mouthpiece. So I'm going to tell you that I feel that it's very close, but there is a little bit more resistance with the travel sax. So you're going to need to push the air um, a little faster, a little harder. OK, that's the first thing. The other thing, too, it's incredibly easy to get a low note. And when you program in the altissimo, super easy. Remember though, it's not as easy on your regular instrument, okay? You have to deal with your embouchure, you have to deal with the jaw pressure. Um, you have to deal you know, with how you're holding the instrument, the, the extra tension you may be having that you shouldn't have. So while you can get these pitches on the travel sax, just please keep in mind, it is not exactly the same as a saxophone. Remember, this is a tool that will help you to work on your fingerings and to keep your keep yourself in shape as best as you can when you need to practice quietly um, for neighbors or for young children. But um, the fingerings, they they you have to press down and you have to be really precise about pressing down at the same time. There were a couple of things, and I spoke to Ramon about that. Some of the keys press down more than others. That's an adjustment that you're going to have to make for right now. Um, he is aware of that, okay? If you have a small hand, the palm keys may get in your way a little bit. All right, I'm going to say that. I have a small hand. 
Um, you can easily reach all these keys, but just, just to keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think this is, this is really a great, great tool to use for all of the reasons and possibly many more that you want. Okay, so I wholeheartedly recommend this. If you have any questions, contact Odyssey Music. I'll put the information in the description below. And uh, I hope that this helped you make an informed decision about the travel sacks. I'll see you in my next video.